My name is Christy Jones. Christy. My Instagram is Swell Anchor. And I came last month and I noticed there were new faces, or even if there were people who've been part of the group as a newer member, I wasn't sure who was who, who I've emailed, who I've spoken to. And so I was like, can we go old school and have name tags? But they're colorful, so you get to pick your own color. So tonight, after my demonstration, we're going to have like a community event where if you want to be creative, I've provided materials for you to do so. If you want to chit chat and just catch up with a friend who you haven't seen, you can chat with them. If you want to meet someone new while you're filling out a name tag, you could do that too. Mm -hmm. So just so that now that we're meeting in person more and not on like Zoom, you're not seeing the name and the face and someone's art all at once. It could just be like, who's who? So I'm Christy. Thank you all so much for coming. I am an artist, a paint maker, and I also dabble in ceramics. Tonight I will be making handmade watercolor paint for all of you to see. I am not camera shy, clearly. Um, so if at any point in the demonstration you're like, I wanna get a closer look, you're welcome to come along on this side of the table and take a, a closer look we'll all be hearing the process of me making paint it's a little noisy so i also queued up a playlist where we'll listen to some beautiful classical music and so if you're tired from work or if you're just stressed out you can just like lean back take a deep breath and allow tonight to just be what it is so thank you all for showing up i'll be the vulnerable one and make art in front of all of you first and then i'll put you on the spot if you'd like to paint with my paint. So after my demonstration, we have community paints that are free for anyone to work with. I have some water. If you don't have brushes, I do have some available as well as I sell my paint sets for you to take home and paint with if you're not really feeling like making something tonight. That's what's behind me here. I'll explain that all later, but if you have any questions, I'm happy to like show you my artwork that's made with the handmade paints as well as you know, hand you a kit for you to create your own creation with my watercolors. The cool thing that I kind of stumbled into is when the pandemic hit, a lot of the art stores closed and then shipping delays. And I was always working within a certain color palette for my own paintings. And at the time I was really working on watercolor and acrylic. And I thought, what if I was the paint store and I could always have the colors that I need. And so I started this kind of rabbit trail where I researched how paint was made and found that you can still make paint by hand. And today happens to be World Pigment Day, which I am working with pigments. It is also World Water Day. So to be making watercolor on World Pigment Day with all of you after three years of doing this alone, it's a complete joy that I'm just not in the little corner like, okay, I'm working by myself. So normally this process takes a little over an hour, but I've kind of condensed it for tonight so that you're not just watching me work and sweat. Um, but when I started to make the paint, I really wanted to be mindful of the sustainability part. So they are non-toxic, they are kid-friendly, they are artist-grade, and they are really good with light fast. I painted these like a year ago, had them in the sun, they have not faded. So I've made every single color that you see here and more, but these are just some of my like quick swatches on the, on the fly. And so to package them up and sell for other people, I didn't want to use a ton of plastic. And I decided, well, people hundreds of years ago used shells. So we live on Long Island where there's a plethora of shells. And I also happen to be a daughter uh, of a clammer. And I was <coughs> used to having clam shells surrounding me in Patchog everywhere. And so I thought, how can I merge those two? So instead of scouring our local beaches and stealing all the shells from the local wildlife, I actually recycle them from restaurants that serve seafood. And so I take their stinky 
shells <laughs> and I sanitize and clean them and turn them into paint vessels. So every paint kit that I sell is in a shell and that's just one way that I'm like reducing a little plastic and then the one step further is for every color of paint that I sell, I donate an oyster to be planted in its place. So last year was the first year that I was like really, you know, kicking off with the paints. But the year prior, we donated 500 oysters to the Bellport Bay here. And last year we did 2000 oysters in Birch's Bay. And so if you don't know anything about oysters, and I know that's not why you all came here tonight for me to like geek out about shells, but we were just talking about shells. So let this inspire those sketches. And what, Jen, what do you do with the shells? You grind them? No, so I make them as the vessel that I put the paint into. Oh, you're so they're not the pigments, they're what holds the paint okay, after but, it dries. All right, but the, the um, pigments, I'll, you're gonna explain, I'm going to explain I that part. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Well, I, yeah, of course. Yeah. And it's going to be, <laughs> you're welcome to ask questions throughout. Even as I'm making paint, you can ask me questions. It's actually like a welcomed break from me just in my own head making paint. So. Um, the last thing on oysters is one oyster can filter 50 gallons of water in a day. So by planting 2,500 oysters, there is 125,000 gallons of water filtered on Long Island a day from my paints. Yay. So Yay. That's, Yay. that's my little water, water day, hooray. Um, so now let's talk about the pigments because it's also pigment day. So when researching, I looked into making my own pigments from rocks and minerals, and some do use seashells, but with seashells specifically, because they're in the water and they may absorb some of the toxins, you have to be really, really careful and wear like an N95 and a whole suit and stuff. And so I was trying to not go that route in COVID. Um, so I purchased them from a woman owned company in Portland, Oregon. It's called Natural Earth Paint. This is how my pigments arrive to me. They sell them in smaller bags, but I've kind of upgraded because I make a lot of paint. And then what I do is I put them in little vials and I label them so I know what colors which when I'm working. It's a little easier to work with this than a big huge bag that will like kind of explode when you open it and then you have to make what's called a binder so i can make oil paint i can make acrylic paint i can make watercolor paint with all the same pigment it's what you mix it with that changes it into the different medium so this is what's called a binder this is a handmade binder by me it has local honey in it it has vegetable glycerin it has clove oil, so you might smell like honey and clove as we're, you know, making paint here. If you're painting with my paint, sometimes they do let off a honey clove smell, and it's like a sensory experience. It's very calming versus mm -hmm. something that's toxic or a chemical in your face. And so that's what this is. So I have to make these in jars ahead of time. This takes about an hour a jar to make. Then it takes an hour for me to mix. So. Before I get mixing, I brought two so that the room can see on both sides. This is called a glass muller. This is what I mix and grind the pigments up with. I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to use both arms at the same time, but I'm really not ambidextrous. So I'm right-handed. I'll be using one muller tonight to make paint, but um, I'll leave this all set up too when I'm done so you can kind of look at it. I just ask that no one touches them because they're kind of finicky. So those are my mullers. I use a palette knife to kind of mix. Old cooking measuring spoons. These were, you know, in my kitchen. I don't use them for cooking now because of what I do. So biggest thing is you don't cross contaminate. So these are now my art schools. And then this is actually a pottery rib yeah. that I got from a private lesson with Jesse, and I realized, I'm like, this moves. This is great for scooping paint, and so this is what I use to scoop it. So, any questions so far before I get in? 
What color do we think I'm making tonight? Blue. Can anyone tell? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm going to try to make as close to what like we advertise tonight, but each paint is unique and the ratio really depends. I'm not going to be like with my scale measuring out. So we're going to make some sort of a turquoise blue. Um, this pigment's called French turquoise. This one is called ultramarine blue. So in all my primary kits, this is the blue. And then this is titanium white. I don't use a lot of white in my watercolors because if you work with watercolors, you know it's not as transparent. This will just shift the hue slightly without changing the paint actual base. So all of these were made with little bits of white in it and it's still, you can see through it. So that's what that is. Okay, any questions? All right, everybody take a deep breath. <laughs> Cue up the music. Calming. Hopefully, no one falls asleep, but we can have a little nap corner if we you have need coffee. to. We have coffee and munchkins. Thank Feel you. free to get up as I'm working, but I'm just going to explain what I'm doing. And then I signed up for the sketchbook project too, and my first page is going to be what I call my impression. So I'm going to make a painting in this as my first one when I'm done making the paint. So to get started, measuring spoon. Pigment. This is one tablespoon. And I'm just gonna measure it out. It's a fine powder. I'm gonna put that on usually the center of my marble slab just so that it's not gonna kind of spill out over the side. I always use the bottom of the spoon just to make a little well in the paint. We're gonna use the little baby quarter teaspoon for the white. I'm gonna put that in the center. I always like to tap too, it's a, it's a whole thing. And then the French turquoise. So this is one of my favorite colors. It's just so pretty. We're also gonna do a full tablespoon of Okay, so right now it's just all powder. If I blue with my breath, it would fly all over the place. So when I make paint in bulk, I usually do wear a respirator just because I'll be making paint for like eight hours and it's like a dust cloud after I'm done, but we're good in here, I promise. It's non-toxic. Okay, so the ratio is pigment to binder. So basically I'm gonna put about two scoops of the binder for the two scoops of pigment that I used. It smells really good. And it's almost like making pasta. If anyone's ever made pasta before, you kind of break the egg into the center. I usually measure out the binder ahead of time, but I don't add it all at once because it's yeah. easier for me to control a little bit at a time. Move this so everyone can see. And then I take my palette knife and look, it's already moving. It really wants to become paint. So now, this is the process that takes an hour. So. I'll move a little faster, but basically I'm just trying to make sure that the paint, as it's together, Got up slow, sorry. you're welcome to get closer to, um, mixes with the binder. You can hear this kind of like scraping sound. Some people do this on a glass palette. If they do that, they have to put white paper underneath. Otherwise, whatever color the table is, it will change. For me, I don't know if it's just because I like marble <laughs> or what, but the texture of marble, it doesn't make as much of a scratching sound like glass. Can. So for me, sensory wise, I like marble, but there's nothing wrong with using glass too. And so the colors are starting to mix together and it's just, this is what I did. Any questions so far? more binder and the cool thing is as you mix two pigments together it's like a chemical reaction they're, they're either gonna want to be friends or they're gonna be like no and the white actually makes it look like waves at times so when I make this like combination of colors it does feel like I'm making the ocean and I work in kind of a 
a swiping pattern with my palette knife and so it's almost like waves. So when I'm home alone in my office, I usually do listen to classical music while I make my paint and I try to meditate. And so I see what the color reminds me of. I just try to be really present. A lot of the time I'm like, oh, I'm not breathing. Oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm just like too focused. And so I'll like have to remind myself to breathe and just to be kind of like in the moment. And so the reason why tonight is called the art of making paint is because after I've done this hundreds of times, hours of my life now, I've realized that this part too is art. What's happening right now is for me, an extension of my finished work but it, my finished work won't look like it does if I don't ground and be present in the colors that I'm making. And I truly believe that my energy is infused into the paint and then into the painting. So it's like a double layer for me. Uh, if you don't want to work with natural paints, that's totally fine too. I'm not a purist where I'm like, everyone must use non-toxic paint and make paint by hand. It's, it's a lot of work, as you can see, this is, what I have to do just to make one color. So if you look at my other artwork later, or even my swatches, you'll see every color stands for a minimum of an hour that I've spent just making the paint before I've ever even made the painting. And so what I was so excited to share was this part of the process, because I feel like as artists, we just see the finished work. You just see, oh, the gallery show. Oh, my painting or my piece got selected for this exhibit. And no one sees this part. Whether you're like messy, I wear my overalls just in case, um, but like no one sees you when you're in your process of working with the piece. And so I wanted to open that up for all of you to kind of see that that part is just as important as the finished painting. That part is just as important as the sketches that you're working on or the failed projects too. I've made paint and it's ugly before and I'm like, I spent now like two hours just making a really ugly color. You'll see some of them in my community bucket. I'm like, well, these are the, <laughs> they're not all ugly ones, I promise, but some of them, are, they're just not pretty. And so it's a lot of color theory. It's a lot of just like magic that happens when you mix two organic pieces and they just don't want to meld. So I... It is gritty. It is like um, baking soda, if you were to like kind of put that out, or no, it's not as smooth as flour. Is that why it takes? And so that's why it takes so long, is because you have to incorporate every single particle into this binder. Otherwise, it's not really paint. It's just a, like an extended pigment. So even tonight's paint, I'm gonna put them in like little shells, and if you want to paint with the actual paint I make here, we can because it won't dry in time and it won't set. So you can just like explore and have fun with it. But I wouldn't do a finished painting with this paint because it might not be fully grinded out. So clearly I've been working with just the palette knife. I've not even touched the muller yet, right? So now I'll take my handy dandy pottery <laughs> tool. And art is all about like finding what works best, right? I know that there's like so many different tools that I could use instead of this thing, but it was on my desk and I love it. And it bends with my hands. So now what I always am doing, I'm just kind of gathering all the paint together back to the center so it won't overflow. Any questions so far? <coughs> yes. Do you always work with the same amount? No. Each time? No. I work with either a larger or smaller depending on what I'm doing. So when I first got started, I like was so scared. This was how much paint <laughs> I made. <laughs> and then I realized um, it doesn't really like grind flat if there's no actual pigment. And so I s started to work with maybe like a teaspoon at a time. And then I worked up to maybe a tablespoon, and now I've had days where I'm working like three to four tablespoons at once, and I'm working in batches, and I just focus on one color. So I'll just make, for all my primary kits, 
like blue, yellow, red, and I make them in large, large batches. The larger the batches, the longer it takes to mix. So sometimes it is easier to work slow and small um, because it's just more time that I'm gonna have to actually grind the pigment smoother. That's a great question. So this is like a normal batch that I would make that I'm like enjoy and I could maybe make a piece of art from it because it's enough paint that I can put some to the side and still paint with it after it's ready. So speeding it up. Making water or what, what that is for this is watercolor. Okay, that's mm -hmm. water. So that if if I used walnut oil instead of this, then it would be oil paint. Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. Okay, so let's right. Yes, so I can too make oil paint. I just don't package and sell them. And I've made some of mine. That's actually how I started making paint. I made oil paint first because it was just walnut oil instead of this concoction that I had okay. to figure out the right ratios. So I'm noticing that it's a little gritty. So I'll add a little bit more binder. And then the, yes. The binder, you have honey. Yes. yes, honey, vegetable glycerin, clove oil, distilled water, and it's called gum arabic. Mm -hmm. It's like a tree sap. Yeah. Some people use it in, yeah. in painting. So that's what kind of activates it. Are they equal parts or what do you They are not equal parts. No, she's not gonna give you the whole I'm not gonna give you my binder <laughs> recipe. That is my secret. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, <laughs> It, there are so many resources online of recipes, which is that's how I started. I changed my, I'll let you in on a little secret. I change my binder based on the seasons. So if it's humid, the paint won't dry. So I have to use less honey. If it is cold, like now, I have to use more honey. And so I'm constantly making a new binder based on the season and based on the consistency of the paint that I want. If I want like a really, really light paint, I need to put more gum arabic, less honey. So. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, so, you ready for Muller time? Yeah. That's what I like to call it. Muller time! Okay, so, I always like to just make sure that there's nothing from sitting on my desk on this. If anyone wanted to come up and see, it's all little gritty dots still. You can watch the YouTube video. M-U-L-L-E-R, Muller. It's like a mullet, but not. Each one's completely unique. I bought this from the same company, two different handles, two different stuff. Full bar handle. Yeah, like a full bar handle. Listen, I had a mullet, now I have two mullets. Yes, absolutely. Do you make acrylic paint? Yes, I do. And that's a different color. It's made with acrylic It's just all of the front. I just wanted to say Muller time. Ooh, which day? He's like, she's in the paint making zone, she's gone. Like, he could be talking to me, and I'm. Oh, wow. 
<laughs> so it's really relaxing. Which my favorite part is about to happen. So my favorite part is about to happen right now. Okay, so Muller time. We all got really excited that nothing happened. <laughs> all right, so this is my Muller. It's just glass. I have to make sure that I have a fresh one mm -hmm. to grind. This one I've used for the last two years and it's started to not grind the pigments as much, but I can still make my artwork with it. So I love to have it. It's my original, it's my best friend. I'm learning a new muller. We're friends, we're just still new, so. All right, so what I do is I place the muller down and you'll see it kind of like moves and shifts and then it is just a circular rotation. How much are these for that thing? We're gonna find out. <laughs> I put some shells out. I don't know if it's gonna make as much as we want, but it might make about 20 little clam shells. Um, so I sell my sets in like mini and large because it's just the amount of paint and the size shell that it goes into. I also love selling them in shells because it gives the paint something to kind of like mold into. And so every bit that I put in, it's about the same, but each shell is completely unique. So you're getting a unique amount of paint. It's not like, oh, 0.2 grams of this. It's an organic amount. So I always say what's in season, literally in the restaurants is what you'll find in my paint sets. So now I'm just kind of mixing it together. And I joked earlier about being ambidextrous. I am not, but my great grandmother was. And so I've been trying to channel her and work with my left hands because after an hour of mixing and sometimes eight hours of making paint, it could be a little tiring. When it starts to get towards the edge, I just bring it back into the center. And so this is it. This is what I do to make a color. And a lot of people ask me, well, how do you know when it's done? And this is something that was like really hard for me when I first got started was knowing, is it paint? Is it ready? And it just took practice, practice, practice. It's just now I know and I look at the paint and I'm like, that's ready. It's almost like a baker watching something bake or when you see water boil, if you're watching it, it's gonna take longer. And so I just can tell by the way that the muller is gliding against the marble that it's smooth. If it's feeling like a little bumpy or if it's feeling gritty, sometimes you can hear the grit. Um, right now we have a really like quiet paint. It's, it's a happy paint. So it's not screeching at me. It's not making too, too loud of a sound. And I can take it like as big as the marble slab. It just always is trying to make sure it doesn't fall over the side. Can you just like adjust the color when you're in the middle of doing it? Yes. Great question. They asked if I would adjust the color while I'm in the middle of doing it. So yes. So sometimes I'll mix, say, a white and a color first. And then I'll add the additional ingredient on top of it. So some of my reels, you might see, oh, it's starting out this color. And then by the end, it's shifted to a different hue. That is just based on my preference of color. Um, but it just, again, if I add the pigment after the fact, I then have to make sure the pigment and the paint that I made beforehand merge. Otherwise, it'll be the new, new color that I added kind of sitting on top of it. So if you came and looked, you might see kind of like streaks and patterns through the paint right now. That's the pigments where they're like not blended together. So it's just a lot of mixing and mixing. Do you have to put a lot of pressure? So to get it really smooth, yes. I'll, I don't know if you just saw me, I like leaned in a little bit more. Um, I try to keep like good posture, but sometimes I'm like, wow. Um, after making paint for like hours, sometimes the marble gets like a little like porous and so it's like wetter. So I'll have to kind of add it so that it's not 
mixing in on the marble and kind of comes up. It'll tint the marble a little bit, but the pressure isn't as important in this stage as it is mixing. Any other questions? I know by my playlist where I'm at, so <laughs> I timed it right. We have time for more questions. <laughs> That's a trick if you're ever teaching. Listen to music over and over again. Know the songs. Make your own playlist. The playlist will guide you. You won't have to look at a clock. Yeah. Or the other thing that I did in the winter a lot was I would light a tea light candle on my desk. And usually a tea light candle will burn in approximately an hour. And so I knew when the candle was out, I was done. And so instead of being with the clock, I was like, if we're, if we're making paint by hand when there's factories, why am I still using this kind of digital clock? I can go all the way old school and when it's you know cold out and feel cozy. It's really fun to like de-screen. I'll be actively on a screen right here, but I'm not on the screen for my art. And that's the like distinction that I find I need. Any other questions? If it's not mixed enough, what will happen when you use it? It will work as paint, so you'll all be able to paint tonight. It's just if you were to paint in a thicker layer, it might not cure and dry fully like in a day. It might just stay like a little tacky because of the honey. So imagine you like wiping down your kitchen counters and you mix, miss a spot and then you go and you touch it and you're like, oh, that was the jelly or oh, that was the honey. Like that's how the painting would feel. It might have like a little stickiness to it. So it's really important for finished artwork that it stays. But I did test this out in a 30 minute go. And so for my sketchbook, I think it'll be. <laughs> so. But the whole night it's gonna stay open. So, all right, so at this stage, I've made this kind of nice blue hue. I'm gonna move that. Now, after making paint for a few sessions, I started looking at the tools a little closer. And before I was a paint maker, I always worked in circular form for my artwork. So every canvas that I did, every painting that I did, it was always a circle. That was like my safe shape to create art in. So if you're a newbie and you're trying to start art, find a shape that you really resonate with and just make it in that. And then you might feel a little bit more confident. So that's a little art tip. But I realized, huh, the Muller's a circle. Hmm, what would happen if I did include my pressure in this mix? And so I started to focus a little bit more on art making while I would be making a color. And I realized that what's happening here is a suction between the marble slab, the paint color that I made, and this muller. And it's all based on pressure. So if I pull down the marble slab and pick up the pressure, I can make a really cool pattern that's going to be different every single time. And so that is what makes my artwork. And so I have all different colors, all different shapes. Every single one is completely unique and different because the pressure in my hand every single time is going to be completely unique and different. That's what they look like. So these are fine art prints. You might be thinking, that circle looks bigger than that circle. Yes, you're right. So what I do is my originals are really small. They're the diameter of this. So in a sketchbook, that's going to be a perfect fit. So I was very excited by the square format. <laughs> We got it! Cover page! So, what I'm going to do now, so I'm going to mix a little bit more, and then I'm going to make a piece of art for all of you to see, and then everyone who comes to the library, who checks out my sketchbook, they can see what we did tonight. So, make sure that it's a little bit more together. 
So that's what started to happen is I was really inspired by climate change. I said that the artwork that I made, I wanted it to be focused around climate change. And some people see coral, some people see jellyfish, some people see seashells, some people see seaweed. And so it just started to create this language between color, my vision, and art. And so they're called my impression series. And South Bay put on a solo show for me last summer at Brewport and they were hanging. So if you were in there, you might've seen some of them, but I had them printed up to 18 by 24. So these little tiny, tiny snapshots of color can make a really, really big impact. And that's kind of like the whole methodology of my art practice. So it felt very serendipitous. All right, so here we go. Normally I say a word, and today is World Water Day, so I'm gonna say it's a word. So this is based on the pressure in my hand. Water. And so this is what's going to then be transferred onto here. my art condensed into a small package oh I can I I can keep going I can make tons so yeah <laughs> she's like make another one <laughs> so this one's actually in my opinion really cool um so the paint on paper can take about 15 minutes the paint in the shell sometimes depending on the weather it could be like two days, one day, 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. It's been across the board. And so I make the paints to sell in small batches and a lot of people are like, you're sold out on your website. I'm like, wow, well, it takes a long time to make the paints. Like I have to clean the shelves. They're I have to make the paints. Popular. They're popular. It's a good problem. But I'm trying to do them seasonally now because I have to make the binder seasonally. Oh. I like working in season. So I'm trying to make them kind of coordinate with this whole process too. And so now what I'm gonna do. So you call it a spring color. It's summer exactly, color. spring color, summer color. So last year I tested it out the theory and had a small subscription where people could subscribe to colors they would never even know what they were going to be and they would ship to them and then they'd find out what paint colors yes, and so, so that's what kind of got me onto this whole seasonal thing and it was really fun and some of the people had never painted before ever so my watercolor was the first paint that they ever <laughs> used it's very high quality paint if i do say so myself and then some people were professional artists so it was like children to people who've been practicing for years and it's really fun the fact that kids can use this paint and the parents don't have to be scared that they're going to ingest something all you need to do is add water and then you have the paint activated once it's dry so it's a really good thing for kids and then my favorite thing in the summer you might see me down you know by the water is i'll take a cup from the bay or the ocean and blend it with my watercolors and sketch and paint and it creates like a crystal pattern because it's working with the honey and it's working with the pigments and so if you feel creative and maybe you have a sketchbook and maybe you get paint and you like summertime and painting outside plain air that's a way that you can infuse that into so any questions before i start scooping into shells I don't know how much this is honestly gonna do. So I'm gonna do like little individual dots, but we have a ton more paint too. I you just want to These are oh. manila clams. They're very small. I got them from a local restaurant. Mm -hmm. um, but my kits usually are sold in oysters. If you've ever purchased a kit and it's not an oyster, that just means that I didn't have access to those shells at that. So it's a mussel shell, it's a scallop shell, it's a clam shell. And normally if I'm selling, I'll put a ton of paint in. Sometimes I have to take the shell and move the shell so that the paint goes into all the grooves. But we're just trying to get 
hands. How many people actually want to try paint for the hands? Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Yeah. I'm just gonna make a bunch. Whatever we get, we get. Any other questions? Yes, so we're going to pass those around. We have little bits of water. Oh, just in case you general, if you would like to see the pottery pieces and also general. Yes. Oh, it's so funny. The storefront in Belfort. That's our work. And they're fantastic. Thank you. So if you get to town, the storefront. The storefront. Yes. That's it. It's just the storefront. Uh, it's a great little gallery. That was my like cheeky way of showing them. If you see a paint color in a different tray, you can swap. You can get to another table, look at the colors that are over there, as well as test out the paints that were just made. We have some water. Thanks, Jesse. 